Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today will be about my workflow of how I build nav bars. Building a nav bar is a crucial part of pretty much every client project that you'll have and also personal projects. So it's an important skill and improving your workflow with this uh, can really like make things more comfortable and efficient for you. So um, yeah, I'll just take you through my usual workflow. And I hope that you can learn something from this video. If that's the case, then feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Webflow content. But let's get right into the video. So the, um, I've just already like dragged a couple of components here from Reloom library um, just to make things look a little bit more like a usual project, even though that's like super minimalistic. Forgive me to not include a crazy interface design just for the sake of filming a little video for you about about how i create nav bars hope you can forgive me about that but enough of that so let's take a look at the nav bars here um in the free version of reloom.io even like re the reloom library um they have a set of webflow components there's also a premium version that includes more components but you can um, do a lot already with this nav bar one component that they have in their free components so i'm copying it now it's my clipboard and i can paste it inside of my webflow project here um there it is and um, it just renamed a couple of classes here because we already have like some buttons here that created the class initially um, however um, now i just replaced it with button itself. So um, if we take a look at it in preview mode, it's pretty wide. So that's the first thing that I'll adjust from this um, by uh, selecting the nav uh, container here and setting a max width here on the nav container. In that case, it's the same um, max width as we have on our uh, other components. So in this case, it's 80 rem. So now it will have the same width here for the content, it will align. And I'll also remove that line on the bottom by just uh, resetting this um, style here. So now no bottom border anymore. And here you see that it's marked as error unknown variable because the background color that's set on the nav bar is not included in our local variables here where we only have white and black. So I'll also go ahead and reset this. Uh, instead, I'll set it to a white background. To confirm it here, yes, that's our white background right there. Next thing that I'll do um, in preparations for mobile adjustments um, that I always do is that I will wrap everything here in additional divs because the nav bar menu here is the default Webflow nav element nav menu, which comes with a set of default styles that can really get into the way of mobile menu building and can really leads to frustrating situations because you don't know why it behaves as it behaves. It's because of the default styles of Webflow's nav element that just can't be altered in that way. So uh, instead of setting a lot of styles on the nav menu directly, I'll set a lot of styles on the nav uh, element inside here that I'll name navbar1, um, just to be consistent here. I'll copy this into my clipboard, navbar1 underscore inner. So now that's where I'll set more styles. Um, I'll also drag the buttons in here um, and I will wrap the nav links actually in another um, element that will be the nav for one links list. So that's uh, my usual setup with this because it's really flexible. And um, yeah, we can also include that one here inside. So now um, um, you can see that it's stacked on top of each other, which is obviously not what we want. Um, instead, I will go ahead and set it to flex and center align it here so that they are next to each other as we like them to be. Um, then we can also remove the flex display on the nav menu itself. And we can also just reset this here. Um, so that looks good so far. Preview mode like that works well. And now on to the next thing here with mobile, you can see that or actually like tablet, I just called it mobile like that. So um, you can see that the nav um, menu lines are currently not showing. And the reason for that is that the variables are um, not inside of our project here. So I'll just reset the values here, because there's actually a better um, way to approach this from my personal experience than setting the background colors here on each individual line that has its own class which I will show you right away. You can also delete the middle line because you don't need that. So now um, instead, I will set a background uh, like a, a color here on my nav menu itself. I'll just set it to red for demonstration purposes here. 
And instead of setting the background colors here, we'll go with the same border width as the height of the element here. In that case, it's two pixels. And instead of now having the black border that is enabled by default, I'll just reset that style. So now it's not blue anymore. You see that it's um, not actually set, which now makes it inherit the font color of the parent element, which is uh, pretty um, nice because then we can control the color of all menu lines from one instance, which will be the menu icon one class, where we can now control the color of all lines instead of having to set it manually on each individual line. So now I'll also remove it here and you can see the lines are red. And if I change the color of the menu icon again to, uh, for example, black, then you can see that it's black here. That's good. And the next thing that I'll do is that I'll um, do some other stylings for the drop down, um, like the main menu here. And we can actually like go ahead and remove some of the styles here um, that are just here for some other purposes because um, the Webflow default styles can get in the way. So instead I'll go ahead here and set a white background color on my inner menu that I uh, just created, or um, we can also like set it here. It doesn't um, really matter. So I'll just go ahead and remove it from here again. And there, instead of like having it flex horizontal as we had on desktop, now we'll have it in a vertical version here and left align it, which is already like a perk from wrapping it inside of another element because the nav menu itself, the Webflow base component nav menu has its um, issues with some flex settings from my personal experience. And um, some people might ask, okay, why are you even like using Webflow's basic component, uh, basic web nav component, instead of just building the whole thing from scratch and not relying on Webflow's components? So uh, it's up for personal preference, but I really like this because I like the workflow of just going to the settings here and easily like toggling between show and hide the nav bar. I just find this a really um, nice workflow. So that's the reason why I'm uh, using this. Also, other developers might be more familiar with this setup, which makes it easier for everyone to collaborate on the project too. So now I'll set uh, spacing here on top and bottom, like even like maybe more spacing here on the bottom, and I'll slightly reduce the space here. Um, Reloom's components also come with the default styling here of the like not the default song, but out of the box, it already has like a drop down animation that is actually responsive, where now on mobile, it would go like this if you if you would tap it. Um, so that's also good here. Um, yeah, and as you can see, everything's working already here. The nav animation here also is coming out of the box um, because here on the nav component, there's an interaction trigger that says when the nav bar opens, there's a specific animation. When it closes, there's an animation and out of the box, it just comes with adjustments to the nav menu lines. But um, we can extend this also by adding our own animations for example just for the purpose of this video i'll just um, change the color of the menu icon here to another value like red here and i'll set it not after the previous action but with the previous action i'll just ease this um, click the wrong thing here ease and like 0.4 seconds or whatever and now we can see that when the nav bar is opening it's changing the color to red so now we would also change it back but that's just like for the purpose of this video also a really nice um thing a really nice um thing that i do all the time and i use all the time is that instead of like now relying on this reloom component and copying in the raw version each time i have my own version of this component stored so there's different opportunities for you different options to store your own components in your environment so that you can access them easily and not have to repeat the same workflow over and over again and one of them would be to just open up another webflow project where you store your components and then you copy it over that's fine you can do this but it's like not the most efficient workflow because you still need to open the other project and stuff so um the reloom um, library has in its premium version you can also store your components there your own components as far as I know I'm not using that version and uh, that option instead I have a Chrome extension that you can see marked with the V here which is the V designs uh, Chrome extension that allows you to store your own components um, here so I can always like copy my own adjusted version of this nav bar over uh, but also like probably with Webflow libraries you can also do a lot with that um, I unpinned the navigator accidentally, my bad. So um, 
I will create another video where I'll show you how to move the nav bar in and out of view um, when it's sticky. So just for, I'll just shortly set it to sticky here to stick to the top. So this is a sticky nav. In another video, I'll show you how to actually move this in and out of view scroll base because I also use this on pretty much every project. But this video here is good like it is, I think. Um, I hope that you were able to take something from this video. If that's the case, then feel free to give me a like or a comment and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.